Hi Artis, what's up? May I have a word, sir? Sure, sure, sure. The result of my analysis of comments and interactions with the community clearly shows that the first non-Indian <laughs> request for a plane coverage is the Russian Su-57, <laughs> sir. The Sukhoi 57? Well, if they want the Sukhoi 57, they need to be prepared for a big surprise. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we are going to cover about the Sukhoi 57, as usual, is not easily found anywhere else on YouTube. The Sukhoi 57 is considered by many the Russian reply to the F-22. Well, if it is a reply to the F-22, it's coming way late because the F-22 retirement has been already planned. However, there are declarations from the Russian chief designer, Alexander Davidenko, that they do consider the F-22 while designing the Sukhoi 57, but they try to do better. And indeed, they succeeded, but they succeeded in the Russian way. The Su-57 program has been long and plagued by delays, but this shouldn't come as a surprise. The development of all modern combat jets suffers from the same disease. That's just the nature of the beast. The roots of the Su-57 program are deep within Soviet territory. In 1979, despite the fact that the Sukhoi 27 and the MiG-29 were still practically brand new, the program for the successor for the 90s was actually set up. The Mikoyan Bureau developed the MiG-1.44, while Sukhoi developed the Sukhoi 37, later renamed Sukhoi 47. The fall of the Soviet Union in 1989 brought all these efforts to a halt. That was a terrible time for older countries that originated from the dissolution of the Soviet Union. So a project like a new fifth generation fighter, yeah, was not really the priority. And they were not restarted till April 2001, when the PAC-FA program was launched. In April 2002, the Sukhoi's proposal for a large heavy fighter was chosen and it had to be built drawing from the experience gained with the Sukhoi 27 family. After the usual problems and delays of different nature, the first prototype flew the 29th of January 2010, piloted by the famous Sergei Bogdan. Sukhoi quite cleverly proceeded with a classic program, no pre-production, but just 10 prototypes for the flight tests and 3 prototypes for the ground testing. And the test led to various updates, including a structural redesign. And mind, this is not surprising at all, considering how peculiar the plane is. From 2007 to 2018, uh, in parallel with the PAC-FA program, an Indian version called FGFA was developed. It was expected to be quite different from a standard PAC-FA. However, the rising costs and the divergence of requirements and specifications ultimately led India to abandon the program. The first Sukhoi 57 was delivered to the Russian Air Force on the 25th of December 2020, and it joined a test and experimentation unit. It was no Christmas present. Christmas is the 7th of January in Russia. 76 Sukhoi 57 are on order, but the initial delivery rate is very slow. The reason behind this is that the final engine is not ready yet, and the current planes are delivered with the AL-41F1 engine. More on this later. So with 76 planes, we may expect that within a few years from now, the Russian Air Force will have three 
regiments operational with the Sukhoi 57. The Sukhoi 57 is beautiful. Marcel Dassault used to say, if it looks good, it will fly well. Personally, I believe it is a urban legend. However, it is really an aircraft featuring very sophisticated aerodynamics. The general configuration is the classic one, wing plus tail planes. At first sight, it may seem to be a lifting body, but from the pictures available, it actually seems to have three separate bodies, a central fuselage and two uh, nacelles hosting the engines on the side, all connected together by the central portion of the wing. The wing section outboard the engine nacelles seems like a delta wing, but overall I believe that it is such a complex uh, contraption that probably escapes any specific classification. Well, seen from above, the wing has at least three different sweep angles. It seems to me to be quite a complex lifting device with various systems of vortices producing non-linear lift. The outer section of the wing seems more normal even because the presence of maneuver slats hints to a normal attached flow. And the same wing section hosts the flaperons and the ailerons. The tail planes, both vertical and horizontal, are entirely mobile, with the vertical tails doubling as arrow brakes. A real innovation, at least on a serially produced aircraft, is the use of levcons in the anterior part of the inner section of the wing. Please, please, please! They don't behave like canards. They are not four planes and they are not even oversized slats. They behave totally differently. They are there to control the flow at the leading edge and govern the strength and the generation of the lifting vortices. They can move differentially and the flight control system uses them, together obviously with the thrust vectoring and the tail planes, to make the airplane tremendously resistant to spin departures. The Su-57 is probably the most maneuverable aircraft ever built. It can fly at angles of attack well beyond 90 degrees, it can fly sideways at high yaw angles, it can translate laterally without pointing the nose in the direction of motion. It can even perform flat spins without losing height and with no loss of control. The nose pointing authority for a plane of that size and that performance is simply amazing. Some say that all these capabilities are not relevant in combat, well, obviously the Russians beg to defer, and we will come to this. In the meanwhile, please have a look at the specification, and please be aware that no official numbers has ever been released, so what you see are just estimates. Should I present the specs, sir? No, this is not really necessary, people can read for themselves. There's a nice music also. What am I doing in this video, sir? Uh, you had the idea. That's an important contribution, no? If I were human, I would be proud of it, sir. The Su-57 is another plastic plane whose structure is largely built with composite materials. About 25% of its weight is composite. In particular, the external surface is entirely built in composites, apart from those areas where the 
metal was actually necessary. Some have speculated that this is the result of the Indian partnership because the Indian DRDO has developed a state-of-the-art composite material modeling technology. The stealth design is quite evident. It is very difficult to find the right angle and the frontal section has the classic edge found in all stealth aircraft. We will get back to stealth, but from a structural and aerodynamic point of view, it doesn't seem that the Sukhoi 57 sacrifices as much as other aircraft to the low radar cross section. Unfortunately, there is no view that I know of the internal structure of the Sukhoi 57, just to understand the interlocking between the three bodies and the wing. If you have any, please let me know in the comment below. Yeah, but why should we be concerned about the internal structure? Yes, because with truss vectoring, lev cones, and fully mobile vertical tile planes, well, the loads that the structure is going to bear are probably quite unusual, and it would be really interesting to understand how this problem was actually tackled by the Soviets. Oops, the Russian designers. So is everything hunky-dory? Well, obviously not. For example, propulsion is still a serious problem, but this will be the subject of the next video in the series. Stay tuned. So if you like this video, I'm sure you will love the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could support the channel on Subscribestar or Patreon, well, I will be grateful forever. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. And now, let's watch some serious YouTube.